Okay, welcome to our lecture on um, design of ground heat exchangers. This is an introduction to using the GLHE Pro program. Um, this particular lecture is really just an overview of the whole process, and then some other lectures will dig deeper into various parts of it. So the fundamental idea of GLHE Pro is sort of outlined on this slide, and I think what you can imagine is that at the core, we have a coupled simulation of a ground heat exchanger. And that simulation gives us temperatures. Those temperatures are go into the heat pump simulation. And the heat pump simulation then tells us what the um, heat extraction rate and heat rejection rates are. And that can vary from the building cooling and heating load depending on the ground heat exchanger temperature. So this is why it's coupled together this way. So in order to simulate the ground heat exchanger, we need to know about the ground properties. We need to know about the, the des general design of the uh, ground heat exchanger. How many boreholes do we have? Uh, what, how they're laid out? What uh, kind of grout we're using? Is it a single U-tube or double U-tube? That type of information. And then what it does um, is, it, well, and when the user provides the loads on the ground source heat pump, right, then what it does is it adjusts the size automatically to meet some user specified peak temperatures. So say you want a uh, you know, heat pump temperature no higher than, entering fluid temperature no higher than 30 degrees C or 86 Fahrenheit, no lower than um, zero degrees C or 32 Fahrenheit. For instance, you'd set those limits and then it would simulate for a number of years, predict the maximum minimum temperature and adjust that so that we typically hit one limit or the other, but not both. Okay, so in addition to the information about the ground and the boreholes, um, we also specify information about the heat pump characteristics. This takes the form of equation fits that from the manufacturer's data that tell us sort of how much heat will be rejected at a given uh, cooling load and given entering fluid temperature and flow rate. Um, and then on the uh, bottom side here, the user inputs the loads on the ground source heat pump uh, and sometimes loads that are what we call direct on the ground heat exchanger. An example would be uh, say you have a building in a cold climate and you use a heat pump for heating. That would be a load on the ground source heat pump. But say you also realize, oh, I've got a source of free cooling, and maybe I can put some heat back in the ground by, I uh, will use a fan coil, you know, I'll connect that directly to the ground loop, and I'll pump cold water from the ground through that heat exchanger. Those kind of loads aren't mediated by heat pump. They're simply a load on the ground heat exchanger, and so we just specify those separately. So there's some flexibility there. One thing you don't do is don't put the loads in twice. So it's any loads, either a load on a ground source heat pump or a load on the ground heat exchanger in terms of input, but not it's never, both are never input. If you put the load on the ground source heat pump, the simulation, this simulation will figure out how much of it is goes to the ground heat exchanger. So just don't do that twice. Okay, and before we get to the, um, GLHE Pro per se, we have a sort of a pre-processing tool we call the peak load analysis tool. It is in version five, simply a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that runs some VBA code. And what it does is it takes the hourly heating cooling loads that you get from a tool like Energy Plus or Equest. These would be the loads on the, typically on the ground source heat pump. Um, and what it does is it helps you determine what the peak load is each month. And you say, okay, that's easy. I just take the maximum. It also helps you figure out the duration and try to explain what we meet in these following slides. So this is a building. This is probably a Swedish building because it's heating all year round, even in the summer. Some of that may be, say, hot water, domestic hot water in the summer but you actually have an hourly load that's varying every hour. And if you see, that's the blue here. And then, if, and so you see also, it looks like maybe on weekends, there's not so much of a load. Um, 
So if you see these orange lines, this is like one the month of January, the average load for January. And you see here, this is a peak load for January. Right? And then an average load for February and a peak load for February. So if we look specifically at February, the hourly loads in blue, you know, they're fairly complex. We get this peak, looks like most mornings, looks like maybe in the weekend we shut off or lower the thermostat setting so there's no load, but then over the weekend, temperatures in the building fall and it starts calling for heat, right? And so there's some increase in heating and then Monday morning comes and we turn the system on. Okay, in GLHE Pro, we represent that with this orange bar. In other words, a monthly average heating load and a monthly peak heating load. And the reason we do that is because in order for GLHE Pro to work fast enough to size this while you, uh, while you wait in a few seconds, um, we need to have a relatively simple simulation. In this case, there's all only two steps that we have to worry about in this month. We have the, this and then the peak in the month, and we don't have to worry about every hour being different. Now we can do this kind of simulation with every hour. In fact, GLHG Pro even has a feature for doing the hourly simulation, but we don't do it while we try to size. Um, so we represent this, the monthly heating and the cooling is done the same way. There's an average for the month and then a peak. Okay, so it's no problem if we know the hourly loads to say find the average for the month and the peak, which looks like maybe it's this hour here, maybe a Tuesday, February 7th, 8 a.m. Looks like it shoots up there. The issue we have, and the reason we have a peak load analysis tool is to determine what duration of the peak load gives the best match. Right, and this, this goes back to how we model ground heat exchangers, how we typically do it by superimposing these step functions. Right, so, I mean, early on there was this idea that we could have some, you know, represent our peak load this way. And in really early, quite early versions of GLHG Pro, maybe version two, right, we had this, but we just sort of had, had an unspoken assumption that the user would somehow know what this duration would be. And what we found in, in practice is actually, it's very hard to look at this and say, oh, there's this sharp peak here. How many hours should it be equivalent to? That's why did we develop this uh, peak load analysis tool. It was developed by my uh, stu graduate student, James Collin, who I think was a master's student when he developed this. He later did his PhD. And in fact, in this lecture, you'll see some results from his PhD work. So for us to use GLHG Pro, step one is to calculate hourly heating loads, cooling loads on the heat pumps for a typical year. And if we have other loads, we'll do that also. All right, we'll typically use some sort of building simulation tool. In the US, it would be Energy Plus or Equest. Equest is probably the most common tool that's used. Uh, well, both Energy Plus and Equest are free, but Equest comes with a user interface. It's, I think it's probably the most common tool, but there are plenty of other tools. There's Train Trace and Carrier Hap, and uh, well, there's other tools uh, that can do hourly simulations. Um, we may have a separate lecture on how to use one of these tools, but that's uh, I don't have one prepared at this point. Um, so, so for now, I'm, I'm assume the the uh, viewer can actually. Uh, figure this out. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet, this peak load analysis tool. And what we do is we put in 8,760 hourly loads here. And we have uh, one step is to compute a peak day. It finds the peak heating day and the peak cooling day. And then once we found those peak days, we're going to run some simulations and we're going to use, we're actually going to input a, a choice of durations and we're going to look for the ones that um, give the closest match. So it's kind of interesting for me to lecture on this because we've also developed a separate tool. It's not really ready for prime time. 
It's certainly not available yet for GLHE Pro, but it does this, automates all this. Um, but at present, if you buy GLHE Pro today, this is what you're using. And I'm sorry to say, sometimes GLHE Pro development takes a long time, so it could be some time before uh, we have an automated tool in GLHE Pro. Okay, so these, this is a snip from the spreadsheet. So this is, for example, for this particular case, this is what the peak heating day looks like. It has this morning spike, right? And then it falls off some, but then later, later in the day, it goes up in the cooling load. Very similar, we have a morning spike. In fact, on this particular peak day, that it's caused by the morning spike. Um, there's a separate question about if this is the way you're controlling it, you may actually want to do things like start your heat pumps at different times so that you don't have you don't have such a strong spike in the morning. But in any case, that's what we've we've uh, done here. We're just going to use that. So what the tool does, right, is the user back here put in, say, six, seven, eight hours for the heating duration, three, four, five for the cooling. It actually runs a simulation with the rectangular pulse and matches it up to a simulation of the actual pulse. And everything's been normalized, so the change in temperature over the day to get from the sort of the base to the peak is one. And then if you look here, and this is unfortunately hard to see, maybe a little easier on the cooling, you can see that in the cooling, the three hour maximum doesn't quite come up to the one. The four hour max hits it about right, and the five hour max is a little bit high. And here, you know, it's a little bit hard to read. Let's see if we, see if we can zoom in on this a little bit more. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the green, the Six hours, it falls short. The seven almost hits it. Looks like the eight is almost exactly right. So what we would use then in the tool, um, oh, sorry, there's also a button you can press to enter this. Um, and there's two, two methods it can use for calculating the peak load. It can take the average over the duration of the peak or the maximum. I think I find I almost always use the maximum. In any case, once you've, you, and you may have to manually change your range to hit this. So it might be that they all go too high or all go too small, right? But in this particular case, a four hour duration is pretty good, all right? And then um, if we, t there's another down lower on the spreadsheet, there's a um, place to specify for heating and cooling what you wanna do, your final decision and you click on this button to get summary data and it makes this um, summary right here. And you're gonna copy this block of four different numbers for each month, 12 months, and you're gonna paste it into GLHG Pro. Okay, so we'll stop there and come back, transition to GLHG Pro.